Welcome to Tickno Weekly Market Outlook for week commencing the 5th of October with me, Patrick Munley. In the US, the President's positive COVID test and little progress on the fourth stimulus package have undermined market confidence a little and provided the dollar with a little bit of support into the back end of last week. In the President's temporary absence, greater focus may fall on his Vice President Mike Pence and the VP presidential debate, which takes place in Salt Lake City on Wednesday. Joe Biden riding high in the opinion polls, Carmilla House's job will be to prevent Pence from scoring too many points. How will the dollar trade in light of these political developments? The early signs are that a big lead from Democrats is seen as reducing the risk of a contested election, supporting risk assets and gently weighing on the dollar. Any Republican comeback could reverse this trend. Perhaps on the fourth stimulus package, this will be watched closely too. After the soft September jobs report, the focus in the week ahead switches back to the Federal Reserve. The highlight here will be a keynote speech from Fed Chair Jerome Powell at the NABE conference on Tuesday. Wednesday then sees the release of the minutes of the September FOMC meeting, where the Fed implemented its policy shift to average inflation targeting. The story looks well priced in by the markets, but in light of the PCE deflator running at 1.4% year on year in September, the market may be more interested to hear about the conditions under which the Fed might tighten policy. Overall, however, expect more dovish rhetoric from the Fed and the clarion call for fresh fiscal stimulus. Elsewhere, the data calendar is light, just ISM services and what should be a wide trade deficit. So from a technical perspective, the dollar index is currently trading above the new monthly pivot at 93.43 and this ascending trend line resistance. So we could see some consolidation here and as long as this level holds, I'm looking for a retest of these prior cycle highs towards 94.75 en route to a potential test of the 95. Uh, 50 area before the next leg down may commence. Now, however, if we do take a close below the 93.30, I'd then be looking for a test of 92.70 en route to a retest of the lows at 91.83. In the Eurozone, interest rates remain on the floor, pressured by excess liquidity now over 3 trillion euros at the ECB, and faced with core Eurozone inflation languishing at just 0.2% year over year. While the ECB acknowledges the inflation drop is temporary, these kind of inflation levels will still have the market expecting fresh stimulus from the ECB come December. Thursday's release of the September 9th, 10th ECB minutes may therefore offer some insight into the ECB's thinking and the members' views on the strength of the euro. There will be a whole host of ECB speakers running from Tuesday through Thursday. The data calendar looks light this week and the holiday in China until Friday may limit some of the recent positives uh, emanating from that region which have been helping to support the pro-cyclical euro dollar. From a technical perspective, uh, the euro dollar is looking to test the descending trend line resistance and the monthly pivot at 117.78 or 80 level. Uh, as this area holds, I'm looking for another leg lower to ultimately get a test of descending trend line support and the prior breakout levels at 114.96, 115 area before the next leg higher. Now, caveat here is again similar to the dollar story. If we can get a close above uh, 118, a sustained close there, then I'd be looking for fresh impetus to the upside to retest these 120 highs en route to a test of 121. In terms of sterling, it's all about Brexit talks, approaching the de facto deadline for a deal. Sterling's sensitivity to the UK-EU trade negotiations is rising, while its correlation to global factors is falling. The meeting between European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen and UK Prime Minister Johnson on Saturday uh, did little really in terms of uh, bringing any new, new information to the market, uh, with the meeting at least, I guess, bringing no escalation in tensions and hints that negotiations are to continue. Uh, this should be good enough to support the pound early in the week. While the outlook for sterling does not look negative for next week, markets continue to see uh, the GBP payoff as asymmetric, skewed to larger losses should the trade negotiations fail versus limited gains should a light trade deal be agreed. This is because in market estimates, uh, they suggest no risk premium is currently built into the pound based on short-term uh, financial fair value models. Uh, 
Uh, on the UK data front, August GDP and industrial and manufacturing production, all released on Friday, should have a limited impact on sterling. It's all about these UK-EU trade talks. From a technical perspective, looking for sterling dollar to hold um, this 128 area as it does. I'm looking for a test, a retest of this prior uh, ascending trend line support to now act as resistance with this 130 70 131 area the key pivot uh, as we head into as we test the upside if however we do see a breach of the uh, 127 70 127 60 area then i'll be looking for a pretty quick retest of 126 75 en route to ultimately test uh, the 126 handle Uh, the recent U.S. yield curve mini steepening, including U.S. 10-year yields trading above uh, 0.70 basis points, did not last long and only provided brief support to the dollar yen. Remember, where inflationary conviction to really ripple through the markets, then you would expect the Japanese yen to underperform on the crosses, with the dollar yen staying supported on firmer U.S. yields. Progress on the fourth stimu <coughs> economic stimulus plan will have a major say in this story. Equally, the dollar-yen's reaction to the president's diagnosis has been relatively muted. Looking ahead, uh, see little on the Japanese calendar to impact the dollar-yen, and the recent and slightly disappointing third quarter Tankan results had little impact. I do think, however, the dollar-yen remains the vehicle to express U.S. election risk, and whether Republicans to find a way back in the polls or question the handover of power, dollar-yen could make a move back towards 104. So from a technical perspective at the moment, I'm looking for the dollar-yen to continue to consolidate in and around the monthly pivot here, 105.35, uh, 105 area. As we do so, uh, we could see prices drift lower to ultimately retest this 104, foreseeing some, some renewed upside. But the key resistance area to be, stay focused on at the moment is the 106 handle. As we trade below there, further consolidation is likely in this pair. Finally, in Australia, speculation about a possible rate cut from the Reserve Bank of Australia has risen in the past few weeks. And next week's RBA meeting will therefore be an important one. Don't expect a rate cut, although a shift to a more dovish rhetoric may be on the cards. Futures market seems to be pricing in around a 68% chance of a cut at this meeting, so the balance of risk for the Aussie is slightly tilted to the upside next week. Still, with a number of factors affecting global risk sentiment, possible new lockdowns, developments in the US stimulus bill, the impact of Trump's quarantine on the presidential campaign, Belarus sanctions, the Aussie will not lack external drivers next week. From a technical perspective, look for the Aussie dollar to test descending trend line resistance and the prior ascending trend line support to potentially act as resistance in and around this zone between one, uh, between 72, 70 and 73 handle. Looking for bearish reversal patterns there to set the next leg of downside in the Aussie, ultimately looking for a test of the 69 handle. Only a sustained push back through the 73 level will reignite bullish sentiment here from where we could then be looking for a test of the pivotal 75 angle. And that concludes the weekly market outlook for week commencing the 5th of October. Be sure to join me on Thursday at 1 p.m. for live market analysis session. And also look out this week and in the weeks ahead for um, two uh, chart hits to be uh, issued each day, one in the London session before 10 a.m. and one in the New York session uh, in and around 2 p.m. UK time. Thanks very much and I hope you have a great trading week ahead and I'll see you same time next week. Thanks very much.